Hello there everyone and welcome to Game Points episode 181, a weekly little get together we talk about recent gaming news. I'm as always your host Stephen Brown and joining me today is... I'm David. Tonight, David, we have some Cyberpunk 27, 2077 news to go over. Apparently some more games are on the way. Alan Wake is back in the hands of Remedy. Tariffs? Yeah, I know we're gonna talk about some tariffs because... Mm. Why would we ever talk about that on a video gaming podcast? And we get to collectively yell, fuck G2A yet again, which is one of my favorite things to do, as you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's real fun. Uh, I do want to mention out the gate, though, that this is an audience interactive podcast. So if you're watching us live here at twitch.tv slash game points Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, please join in the conversation. That's one of the big points of this. We take, we'll take in comments, questions, concerns, anything you want to talk about, as long as it's germane to the conversation. And if you happen to be watching this later at youtube.com slash gamepointspc, feel free to like, comment down below. And regardless of where you're at, you know what streamers want, like, subscriptions, all that good stuff. David? Yeah. How was your weekend? Pretty good. I started playing Monster Hunter again on mm -hmm. PC. Mm -hmm. Um so that I could prep for Iceborne, even though it's not going to be out on PC in 800,000 years. But the big reason is because I recently swapped out my motherboard finally, so my computer is no longer bo bottlenecked, and I can actually run that game properly. Yeah, and it doesn't look worse than it does on PS4. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the same boat. I recently picked Yay. up Monster Hunter as well for the same reason to play through Iceborne when it does come out. I'm Thanks having sale. to go through and remember how to play it all, and it's because of that Steam sale, because it was 30 instead of 60 right now. Or 50, oh, I don't need to remember how to play it. I have probably 4,000-ish hours series-wide. I, I don't have that many, but I did have enough to make it kind of a slog to go through everything over again. Salty Frank, Vince Nitro, by the way, thank you for showing up in the chat. Your presence is appreciated. Before we get into all the news, there is one thing I want to mention out the gate, and that is if you are any kind of fan of Twitch, you would have noticed that Games Gun Quick was running over the weekend, and that is the giant speed-running charity marathon that the organization puts on. They benefit Dodge Without Borders, and it goes for a solid week. There's some amazing speed runs that are on there, some annoying yep. ones, some good ones, and they ended up raising just over $3 million for Doctors Without Borders. So congratulations, the game's done quick. A couple of very, very quick statistics come from there. They had a maximum donation of 341000 No idea who gave that. And the average donation was fifty nine fifty six, so just shy of sixty bucks per average donation. I'm sure that one max donation of essentially three hundred fifty thousand dollars is offsetting that number quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Did you watch any of that? Yeah. A any any favorites? Any standout ones that made you go, "Damn, that was cool." Uh, well, as a general rule, I watch all the Souls games. I tend to watch, and then I'll just watch random side scrolling platformers. Okay. Whatever, whatever uh, I, seems I, fun. I caught the last bit of the Clone Trigger run, and while I, I, I appreciate how well those people have the math to that game down, and they, they finished 100% of Chrono Trigger in six, less than six hours, which is impressive. One trend, though, I'm noticing that, that I really want to fucking end when it comes to any kind of video game event are the assholes in the crowd who keep thinking they're funny and shouting out random shit, hoping for their little minute of internet fame. Oh, yeah, right? Like, we saw this during E3. Yes, we got the You're Beautiful comment with, with Keanu Reeves. Okay, that was cool. But because that took off so hard on social media, every fucking con conference after that had some heckler, for lack of a better term, screaming out something inappropriately. And that same thing was happening during a couple of the runs at Games Done Quick. And I'm just I like I like some done. of the times when the audience interacts. Um, like, if uh, someone throws the word hype into their donation and the whole crowd just yells hype or, or just random cheeky that, stuff that that's, kind of develops that's different as the show because goes. the crowd is meant to interact with those specific things though that's meant yeah. to get the crowd to do something some guy being an asshole isn't isn't great though yeah it's it's all because everyone wants that meme based off of them they want that minute of internet fame it's not even 15 minutes andy warhol was incorrect in the future you're not going to get 15 minutes of fame you're going to get 30 seconds of fucking fame and everyone do it is for the for vine it. seven seconds bro <laughs> And it's 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 quickly becoming annoying to the point where I'm I I am either like changing the the, the stream or just muting it. Mm. It, it, it there we need to reel that shit back in. And short of actually kicking people out of the conference or whatever it happens to be, I don't think it can be done. But there is just something about decorum. I don't know I don't know what it is, but we just decided fuck that. Just everyone everyone out for their own. 
Let's see, Vince Nitro says, It's the same as anything. When the novelty is there, it's the genesis of the meme. When people try to replicate it, it gets sad quickly. And that, that's it exactly. Mm-hmm. It, it's meme made manifest, and we need to watch out for that shit, because an overproduced meme is annoying as hell. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and move on with the news of the past week. And this one's kind of, kind of fresh, a little fresh. Uh, and that's fresh their, enough. Fresh enough. There are apparently more than one Cyberpunk 2077 game coming from CD Projekt Red. This is ridiculous. This story is from Destructoid. And uh, yeah, it's exactly what he said. There's apparently three Cyberpunk 2077 or Cyberpunk adjacent games coming out. So there's the one we know about, Cyberpunk 2077, yep. that we've been collectively excited about for quite a while now. And then there is supposedly uh, two more teams working on individual Cyberpunk project projects. The second is a standalone multiplayer title that's in universe and related to the the game that we're getting. How do you feel about that? So here's the thing: I'm kind of interested because there was always like the the Skyrim Fallout thing of like, oh, this could be fun with friends, and then Fallout seventy six did what it did which did not in any way scratch that itch. But if they can manage to pull off a first-person RPG that actually has a good feeling and playing multiplayer mode, then I I could still be behind it. If it's not you playing through the main story and everyone is playing at this, as the main character at the same time and then cutscene switch to like your point of view, but it's a in-universe side story with multiple people that can do the, the stuff they want, Borderlands in a cyberpunk world, I could be super down with that. I'm going off the board with this one. I, I don't think it's that at all. What I what I envision this being, and keep in mind, this is all just rumor, speculation, and kind of wish listy here. What I would like for this to be, do you remember when Microsoft tried to reboot Shadowrun back in 2007 and they made it a first-person competitive shooter? Uh, No, I just remember Shadowrun Returns because that game was good. Okay. So back in 2007... Microsoft and this it released a first person shooter Shadowrun. They're trying to cash in on the Counter Strike craze. By the way, they made it exclusive to Vista only at the time. I believe it was Vista mm-hmm. or, or, my, or Xbox 360. And it was a four on four team based shooter where you can kind everyone had a certain amount of points they can spend on abilities and then take that character into there. So if you wanted to go full tech, for example, you could. Uh, Equip your character with a targeting ID. That means your shots will auto hit for a certain amount of time. And you can also be tougher and you can jump farther. Conversely, if you went magic wise, you can like teleport through walls and shit. Now imagine a first person shooter that's like that where you can teleport through walls. Hmm. You can do some, some cool shit. That game bombed horribly. But that concept was really fucking cool. And I would love to see... CD Projekt Red take the cyberpunk universe where everyone can have like a a wide array of modifications to their body and then go, okay, you have 10 mods you can install or five mods you can install and customize your play style and then go out in this map and fight each other. I can see that being what they're working on. That's the first thing that popped into my mind when I read that they were doing this. I mean, that would be a thing that would be interesting for me to watch best of gameplay clips of but i wouldn't play it fair enough and by, by no means do you have to play it that's just i can see them doing something like that my gut for some reason tells me that's what this is going to be yep uh and then there's the third project which is just a major unannounced AAA title in the cyberpunk universe and it's quote a really big and innovative project that will likely release 2021 no idea what that is it could be essentially a cyberpunk version of gwent it could be what i was just talking about it could yeah maybe be... we'll get both yeah maybe i'll get the maybe i'll get the four-player co-op story-based dream that i've always wanted and you'll get whatever nonsense you were just talking about <laughs> it, it could be fucking xcom for in the cyberpunk universe a strategy game yeah, or something not? like that we have no idea but if they're releasing it in 2021 that's quick that's real quick for cd project red well i mean they've been working red. on the engine so i'm imagining it's all going to be in an engine cd project red because yeah, I can project, pronounce words. Project Wed. Uh, anyways, these are me. These are just us spitballing these ideas. Please let us know what you think these upcoming cyberpunk games from C Project Red might be in the comments down below. David. Yeah. I'm excited for this next story because of the possibility that can come from it. Not necessarily what the reality is, but the possibility of it. This new story in a press release to investors, Remedy 
has announced that they got the development, that they got the publishing rights, rather, back for Alan Wake. Woo. That's that, that game means, you keep telling me to play. Yeah, Alan Wake was an amazing <laughs> game. Came out on the Xbox 360, I believe. It was a horror slash suspense game. It was really goddamn cool, and no one really bought it enough to justify a sequel, sadly. It became kind of like a cult hit. Remedy's always had a bunch of cult hits out there. If you haven't played Alan Wake, I highly recommend taking take a look at it, and I'm very excited to know that they, Remedy has the IP to that back. I From, own it. <laughs> owned it for a long time. Just haven't played it. <laughs> I, 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 I say do it. It is a good game. From the press release itself. For its first half-year period of 2019, Remedy Entertainment PLC records approximately 2.5 million euros of royalties from previous release games as a one-time income. These royalties are paid to Remedy during the second half-year of the period of 2019. In relation to this, the publishing rights of Alan Wake games are reverted to Remedy, meaning they got them back. This is a one-time income and does not significantly affect Remedy's full-year result, because as previously reported, the company continues to invest in developing new games, the success of which will have great impact on the company's full-year revenue and result. End of the statement. It's very quick, very succinct, and more or less says, hey, we got the IP back, which is awesome because Alan uh, Remedy has always seemingly wanted to make a sequel to Alan Wake. People have been mm-hmm. clamoring for an Alan Wake 2. In fact, they were developing they Alan, they were developing it, and it kind of got canceled halfway through. Wasn't there a, a spinoff or like a spiritual game successor? That there was. There was a couple of DLCs, and then there was a standalone kind of expansion called Alan Wake's American Nightmare, which sucks, unfortunately. I, no, it sucks. Uh, I was about to say sucks is harsh, but we're going to go ahead and say it sucks. Uh, let's see. Salty Frank says, remember, if you pick up Alan Wake, pick up the game labeled Alan Wake and not Alan Wake American Nightmare. The latter is a good game, just not as good as Alan Wake. So, yeah, you want specifically Alan Wake. Uh, it was really, really good. Uh, I see Vince Nitro in chats making fun of my inability to pronounce wed, right? So thank you for that, mm-hmm. Vince Nitro. When asked about Alan Wake, going back to the story, Remedy said only the following. The only thing we want to clarify now that Remedy owns the publishing rights is that we could bring Alan Wake to a different platform if we so choose. Release it on everything. Put it on the Switch. It's already, it on, Switch, it's, it's already it. on Steam. It's already on Xbox. Uh, what he's referring to is specifically, like you said, Switch and PlayStation. Yeah, if you put it on, if you put it on Switch, I'll play it. The thing is, at this point, I mean, it's like, always the it's, Switch is the only place I go for backlog games. If it's older than like three years, I'll play it if it's on Switch. What what I see them doing, what I see Remedy doing here, is in an effort to gauge interest in if a sequel would be worth a damn or not. They would do a remastered version of this game and put it yeah, on makes sense. everything. And see how well it does. Yeah, that that would be the test bed, which is why I was so such a big supporter of Red Faction Remastered Edition when THQ Nordic put that gem out. Going, mm-hmm. please buy this game so I can have a proper Gorilla Two for fuck's sake. Please just give me Gorilla Two. That's all I want. Also, you can buy Alan Wake on Steam for four dollars because it's on sale. It's, it's always cheap. I mean, in fact, I think I've seen it as cheap as fifty cents once before. Oh, well, then don't buy it for $4 because you're wasting your money. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear I've seen it super, super, super cheap before. Was it aggressively cheap before they lost the publishing rights? Or have they? who's been selling it this entire time? Uh, I, I don't know. I know that Alan Wake got pulled from digital stores for a little bit because of music licensing issues, which we've seen mm-hmm. happen every now and then. Because they had music from Roy Orbison. They had music from Poe. They had music from... Uh, uh, a couple other people whose name I forget off the top of my head, but essentially the rights to use that music expired, so they had to pull the game completely from Steam and then release it with different music in place. So, yeah. Alan Wake is a game, if you, especially if you like horror games and you have not played Alan Wake, fucking play Alan Wake. It is so goddamn good. Uh, it, it is... It's it's a Stephen King novel wrapped up in Twin Peaks, essentially. And I, I, I just cannot press enough how much I love that game. David? Yeah? You're just a big fan? Yeah. Just love it? You really want me to play it? Yeah. All right. Do you want to get upset at the story, or should I? Oh, we could both get upset at this story. Okay, well, why so, don't you why don't you is, let the rage out first? Because this is kind of a fun throwback because we haven't been like super pissed at this specific company in in a while. It's been actually. a while. It has been a while. They kind of it's disappeared. Been a minute. I kind of forgot about them. Um, obviously, they didn't forget about us because they still want our money and they don't want game devs to have it at all. Of course, I am talking about G two A and the official game point stance that is fuck 
G2A. <laughs> right. Um, from Mike Rose on Twitter. Uh, Mike Rose worked on Descenders, Not Tonight, Hypnospace, a couple of different indie games. Uh, he recently noticed that G2A put, took out some Google ads for his games. Right. So if you look up his games on Google, you'll get like a Descenders link that you can click on. That'll take you to a store page so you can buy it, right? That's That seems normal for video games. Except for it takes you specifically to a G2A site link where you can buy a copy of the game from G2A. Now, the big thing is that G2A is a key reseller uh, that we've pretty much seen proven that a lot of their keys, or at least were, uh, obtained illegally, illicitly, There shadily. is a significant number of keys on G2A that are generated fraudulent? through credit card fraud. Yeah, they're fraudulent. If not yeah. stolen, then outright, like fake and yep. this is the, the fact that g2a is like yes i'm going to buy an ad on behalf of this game and then link it back to our store like what it, it's like I, I i can't the balls yeah it's kind of ridiculous um yeah salty frank going... it's the internet equivalent of a new merchandise at a flea market it's literally a guy in the back of his truck saying, I got a VCR for you to buy or a DVD player. Insert more yep. modern technology here because my mind's stuck in 50s, uh, 80s movies when you see that. <laughs> Do you want this truck full of DVD players that are all slightly different and yeah. all brand new in boxes? And I definitely obtained them legally, which is why I have a truck full of DVD players. It's like back in my old GameStop game crazy days when I would have someone walk up with uh, like 10 copies of the brand of a brand new game still sealed. They're like, yeah, uh, my 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 mom got these for me. It's like, get the fuck out of here. No, that sounds right. Um, but going on from, from the Twitter, so Mike says, G2A is taking out sponsored ads on Google, which means that when you search for our games, you get G2A popping up above our own links, and we make zero money on our games if people buy through the ads. He also had issues turning the ads off as it kept like flipping back on. He then goes on to say, please, if you're going to buy a game from G2A, just pirate it instead genuinely devs won't see a penny either way so we'd much rather that g2a didn't see any money either because one thing that people don't know david is that when you when a fraudulent key is sold on g2a it's not just essentially a stolen product getting, it getting shafted it's oh, no, the it credit card trans the credit card chargeback that ends up hitting the developer it's all the support yep. they have to fucking go through to go hey i'm sorry your code is is not is fake you have to go back to g2a yeah. There are so many which, other which bullshit ends to them problems. either like paying credit card fees for stuff that was stolen, and then also have to shell out a key for, for some like it's just ridiculous because they lose twice. Yeah, it's it's fucked up. Uh, I I hate and, and to say that G two A is ignorant of what's going on in their store is facetious. They know exactly what's going on in the store. They make money based off what's going on in the store. They have that shakedown G two A shield protection racket. That's essentially them going, "Oh, it's, it's what a what a nice what a nice set of codes you have here. It'd be a shame if we just started selling them fraudulently. Pay well, us, and also, that won't happen." Yeah, they they approach developers and say, "Oh, by the way, it looks like some of your keys are being." sold fraudulently so if you do us a favor and you supply us with a thousand keys we'll make sure you get a cut of them yeah fuck off it's ridiculous they are it, it is it's so bad and i let me let me get this last part here rose then later claimed and to be fair it's just him making the statement we can't verify it or not that apparently g2a made a bunch of their sponsored streamers reach out and read statements this week and explain why they're not evil thanks to these tweets let me tell you something. This goes directly to people who are on Twitch or are streaming right now. If I see a G2A affiliate link down on the bottom of your Twitch stream, I have an 80% chance of just immediately jumping to another stream. Yep. There is no excuse to be doing business with these people. Yes, I get that the money can probably be good. But in the end, they are a fucking fence. You are facilitating a fence. And you need to fucking stop. And there's no excuse. You can't go, well, I didn't know. Do some fucking research on who you're partnering up with. You're putting your name on that. And if G2A, if, if what Mike Rose here is saying is true, and once again, we only have his word on this part of it right now. If what he's saying is true and they sent a statement out to you guys to read, where are your fucking ethics at? You're not an employee of G2A. 
You don't have to do damage control for them. At best, you are an affiliate that someone can click on a link and you get a cut of. You don't have to blow them to fucking keep that affiliate link off. And if a company comes up and says, either say nice things about us or we pull your fucking license, then you don't want to be in bed with them to begin with. Fuck off with that. Jesus fucking Christ. It, it just infuriates me. Yep. It's kind of ridiculous. Although the best part is, uh, for me, this just turns into another fuck Google moment and all their ad bullshit because I just run ad blocks. So I, I wasn't able to verify any of this stuff in the first place because I don't get Google ads. You know what's funny about that? I spent like 10 minutes trying to verify it before I realized ad block turned on to it. I was like, oh yeah, that's why I'm not seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Google. <laughs> I realized a long time ago that I think you're ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I used to have no problem with ads online. For the longest, I didn't have ad block until about a year ago. You know what actually finally made me put ad block on? Uh, Sound-based advertisements that you couldn't yep. minimize or find? Yep, exactly. Because I, I ended up going to a major gaming website one time. I was like, sure, I'll have these ads going. And the volume to that ad was so loud it legitimately made my ears ring afterwards and i was like fuck i can't i can't do this anymore i'm out because i had headphones on and i was on my phone i installed an ad blocker as soon as i realized that there were some sites that were pushing ads that were uh actually mining your computer for resources so they could crypto mine i see i didn't even know that that's fucked <laughs> i didn't know that was a thing yeah so yeah uh fuck g2a yeah, fuck G2A. I that, will that's... say right now, all these statements come from Mike Rose. So if you have a legal issue with with me, G2A, you can, I, may I direct you to Mike Rose? <laughs> uh, not to sell him out, but we are just simply reading what he is saying. However, based on the history of G2A, and I do recommend you guys look up uh, the dearly missed Total Biscuits video on G2A and why they are a fucking fence. Uh, I, I just type in essentially Total Biscuit G2. I'm sure it'll pop right up there and take a look at it. And God damn, it is so. This company fucking sucks. And I'm shocked that they're still in business. They've been able to pull it off. Well, they pull it off with they indie also, devs too. too. They That's... also sponsor like major gaming teams. What's what's really annoying too is that it's always indie devs who have to bitch about this because they know if they try this with like an EA or an Activision, they would land on their ass like a chunk of bricks. Mm -hmm. They deliberately target smaller developer teams who have who don't have the legal recourse to actually do something about this. Anyways, fuck G2A. I just I just want to get that out. I think we've all established fuck G2A. And for those who might have missed it, let me say once again, fuck G2A. And to yeah. a lesser degree, any streamer who does miss it to them. But I, I can kind of at least understand that because... Shit, if you need money, you need money. I get it. I'm I'm pretty sure uh, G2A can be summed up in a Reddit post from several months ago with someone posting, asking, honestly, is G2A trustworthy? I got this mail saying they had a game I like on sale. Short answer, no. Long answer, no. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so bad. And that's, the, that's the whole thing. That's all you need. It's, it's Perfect, so bad. Uh, Captain Ice Cold Chat, first of all, thank you for showing up. Second, he says, people ignore the morality of things when it comes to getting cheap products. Yeah. I mean, shit, we do it. We buy consoles from China, which is I going just, to be something that I'm going to bring up later. But it's, it's, also, uh, it's also ridiculous to think that, okay, yes, you are going for the cheaper option. There's a legitimate indie dev that says, if you're going this route, please just pirate my video game. Yeah. Because... As it is, you are just giving a reseller money. So just give nobody money. Yeah. Moving on, because I mentioned consoles, to some information about possibly the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't want to mislead people here. We're not talking specs or anything like that. We're just kind of talking about the direction Sony might be taking the PlayStation 5 with. And this is via Game Did You Stop Biz. However, it originated from the Wall Street Journal. But the Wall Street Journal puts up things like if you want to actually read this article, subscribe to us. So You get one more article that. this month or blah blah blah. Yeah, fuck that. Anyways, from Game Did You Stop Biz, who in turn got their information from the Wall Street Journal. Thanks guys for reading somebody else. It, which we're about to do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The Wall Street Journal has shared some insight from two anonymous Sony officials onto how much Sony is prioritizing hardcore players. In a recent company strategy briefing, Sony Chief Executive Kenichiro Yoshida described the PlayStation 5, or whatever it's going to be called, as a niche product aimed at hardcore players. I want to put a pause right here. This feels like a statement 
that is being said that he doesn't necessarily mean but is meant to play well in the public because no company wants to release anything that their entire business that so Sony computer entertainment america does not want to release this console only for niche players let's be honest here they don't want to limit their audience mm -hmm. but he knows if he says we want a console for everybody that invokes shades of the disastrous xbox uh one console reveal where it was like tv tv call of duty sports tv <laughs> So this is spin. It's clever spin because it's trying to go, you want to be a hardcore gamer, son, then you get the PlayStation 5 right now for five ninety nine ninety nine. dollars 99 Yeah, PlayStation's for the players. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it's clever spin, but it's still spin because let's be honest. Sony ain't going to make a console meant for only a small handful of people. They want the biggest target audience possible. Yeah, they want everybody to play it. But they understand that they got to appeal to that base. Right. Because if he would have said we would need a console for everyone, it would be an it would be the headline of every single fucking gaming website out right now. Who, despite claiming they hate gamers, love to make headlines des deliberately designed to enrage them. Yeah. Well, so you can't make a console for everyone. Sony, Nintendo's got that unlock. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to the article itself, the emphasis for the machine is on 8K resolution, ultra high def graphics, and as the platform holder believes, visual quality to be a key factor in players' purchasing decisions. So. Cool, but isn't that... I mean, that just seems like that's how things should be going, right? Mm -hmm. 8K resolution, ultra-high def graphics. Also interesting to hear from Sony, considering how they handled their Blu-ray thing. Now, you know this Blu-ray story better than I do. Oh, God. The fact that there's not an HD Blu-ray player in the in the PlayStation? Yeah. And there wasn't one in the Pro, because it made sense at the time of the PS4, because they didn't have their own in-house one, so they would have had to pay Toshiba for a Blu-ray drive. Or an HD Blu-ray drive. But how do they not... That's something I have to ask. How do they not have their own in-house one? They came up with Blu-ray. It's their fucking technology. They worked on it longer. Theirs, when it was released, was hands down the best one on the market. Like, not even not okay. even close. Um, it was just... They, they didn't have it ready in time, and it would have made the thing $200 more expensive, and they couldn't afford it. And then they made the Pro, and they're like, uh, turns out it still makes it a lot more expensive. I ju I, it's it's just it's hilarious that Sony themselves didn't put in something that they themselves designed and won. By the way, they won that fight. Yeah, it was I between saw, Blu Ray and HD DVD, and they won that. I saw fight. an HD DVD the other day, and I was like, "What the hell is this DVD with the red case? Oh, it's an HD DVD." Yeah. I remember you guys, vaguely. I remember the day my retail store cleaned them out. The HD DVD player itself went on sale for like 10 bucks. The the add-on for the for the 360 went on sale for 10 bucks, And every DVD for it was for a dollar. Perfect. And I remember someone coming and going, I want all of it. Why like, not? Here you go. And he, he got like 80 movies or 50 movies or something like that for 60 bucks. That was, that was a good dude. buy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just I just find it a little little funny that uh, Yoshida is talking about how their emphasis is going to be eight K resolution, which maybe three percent of the country has something that can do eight percent eight K resolution right now. And what are you talking about? Graphics. Like eight percent of the country can do four K. <laughs> that, that's yeah, <laughs> like it's, that it's 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 very, very very small percentage of people that can hit that resolution. But this is coming from the company that wouldn't put in uh, that that Blu Ray player in their PlayStation Four Pros and PlayStation Fours. What do you what do you what do you think about the chances of the PS5 actually having a HD Blu-ray player <laughs> still using old format? Uh, Coco Fotaco says eight people can do 8K. That makes about sense. It, it is an exceedingly small number. Uh, we're we're both kind of up and up on tech. We're, we're, I don't want to say we're tech junkies, but we both do kind of have that need to buy the newest thing that's out there within reason. We have that I need mean, to buy the second most important thing out there when it comes you, out. You have the need to buy. I have, like, the desire and no means to buy. <laughs> Fair enough. But even neither one of us ha are even remotely capable of doing this at 8K. No, 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 no. So but I'm also is... willing to bet that neither is the machine. Let's be real. You what? This all Technically, the PS4 Pro supports 4K. Quick, someone tell me how many 4K PS4 Pro games there are. Because it many. ain't a lot. This all ties back into what I was mentioning earlier. This is bullshit. Now, yes, the, the, it might actually do 8K. He ain't mentioning it because it does 8K. He's mentioning it because he wants that 
that frothing fanboy to go, oh, yeah, that's the most powerful thing ever. Yeah, give it to me right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> This, right. this is a feature not that's meant not to be used, but to be a selling point. Yeah, why not? So, cool. And honestly, I don't see 8K being a thing in the future. I mean, it might. I could be wrong. But I mean, they got to get... We've hit the wall because it, at a certain point, TVs had to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no. TVs had to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller because they used to be the size of a living room. And then we figured it out, and they started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know... 600 pound plasma TVs were a little ridiculous and they went flat and then they had to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now they have 90 inch TVs that nobody in the world needs, so they got to do something. So if you can't make the TV bigger, make your resolution. A better. Yep. There comes a point where you need a bigger house to provide for your TV, and at that point, you hit a hard cutoff. Let's see. Uh, where was I? Oh, okay. So, so, so far, everything that's been mentioned in this games industry via Wall of wall street journal kind of bullshit has been nothing that's really all that important it's been more just red meat to the crowd as it were this is where the important part comes in the company is said to be concentrating on strengthening relationships with large publishers as well as working on triple a exclusives from its internal studios it is not targeting indie or smaller developers as resources are limited case in point sony is not planning to showcase independent developers at this year's tokyo game show as it's done in previous years one of the officials explained that Sony believes people will buy the next console for high-quality exclusives rather than smaller games already available on mobile. This kind of pissed a lot of people off, but the sad fact of the matter is, he's 100% correct. Yeah, have you seen the, the Switch eShop recently? Yeah. Because I don't like looking at it. If it's a smaller indie dev or, or, or mobile game or whoever it might be, your game's probably not going to be console exclusive to begin with. Yeah, it's going to be on everything. Yeah, so why does Sony need to focus on a game that's going to be everywhere? They need to focus on things that's going to make their console stand out because the more I'm hearing about it, the more I'm hearing about both Scarlet and whatever the next PlayStation's going to be, the more it sounds like they're not really going to be that much noticeable and jump between what, they're, what we currently have right now. Yes, there will be some tech improvements. Yes, there will be extra things that they do, but it's not going to be a mind-blowing, oh my god, the future is here kind of thing. It sounds like it's going to be... One of, uh, in, in one of those uh, leaks on the, the CPU side, that's potentially possible that the chip that's going to be in the PS5 is five times as powerful as the one in the PS4. What's that but translate that, to visually, though? What's that translate you, to as far as games? Not a lot, besides things being smoother. Exactly. And looking a little better. The hardware, yes, will be much advanced. I'm but so for, for the whatever, average... Whatever game Kojima makes on that. For the <laughs> average gamer, though, isn't going to really notice anything different. I don't think. that. From what I'm hearing, this is all hypothetically and everything like that. From what I'm hearing, you're not really going to notice much of a difference in the in, in the, in the well, tech also, behind it. It could be all but under the, under the, the hood. But on the front end, you're not going to see a difference, which means Sony does need those exclusives to differentiate itself from the Xbox. It's also we're at a weird position where there was always this kind of graphical chase for all the companies and all the devs to try and get the best looking game, best looking game, best looking game. And that's kind of stopped, especially with the, the like sort of retro revival we're in with all the indie yeah. games and all the platformers and all the Metroidvanias. You don't need a game that has... 4k resolution and all this crazy stuff because think of how many copies undertale sold one of my top five favorite games of last year was return of the Obra Dinn. that is literally a one-bit game yeah and so with that they just need gameplay and they need devs to work on games not just technology not just things that look pretty i also think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing microsoft gobbling up so many independent studios right now too yeah because they gotta going... be they gotta have something in the fight because for the last console generation, there hasn't been a reason to own a Microsoft console unless you specifically like Halo or mm -hmm. Forza. And I'm sure there's a couple other things, but uh, sorry, guys. Crackdown 3 didn't turn out too well. What this is going to lead to, however, David, is a bidding war for smaller studios. You're going to see them getting gobbled up left and right. So for the people who really hate the big name publishers, uh, you're going to have a really rough couple years ahead of you. Because you're going to see smaller independent studios getting bought and gobbled up left and right. It is going to be a feeding frenzy as these consoles need something to differentiate from each other. 
Now, Captain Ice Cold in chat asks, is this the death of the console? Is the death of the console market inevitable? No. I don't think so. Yeah. Not for not for a long time. People have been saying that the well next generation console is going to be the last console since the PlayStation Three, but convenience also, will always Also, people have been win saying out. people have also been saying that every year is the death of PC gaming. Yeah, because consoles are doing this, that, or the other thing. Ne neither are true. Both are industries that are going to do really well. Right, and they both serve very two specific markets. If you are not afraid of technology and you have disposable income, you buy in a high end PC because you know how to do with it. If you don't, if gaming is just a, a pastime for you and you don't want to spend too much money on it, a console's for you and you don't have to worry about all the updates and bullshit that, with that. You literally just or, plug or and play and go. Or that's where your friends are or that's what you like to do or whatever right. because for you, it's easier to drop four or 500 bucks every seven years uh, and, be, and be current. More like five. This generation, uh, the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 generation went way fucking longer than it normally should have because of the market crash in 2008 yep and in the mid series consoles yeah but no I, I don't think that we see the death of the console market anytime soon but buying, and, but buying but. the newest console as soon as it comes out every time is still cheaper than keeping a pc up to date with current graphics yes very because you drop that on a graphics card if you want yeah i mean my graphics card cost me as much as the playstation 3 did when it first launched so mine didn't <laughs> Right Not on. even close. <laughs> David, we got two more stories coming up. Uh, one of them is going to be really boring. The other one is super, super exciting. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. Do you have anything to say about this next one, or do I just need to kind of take over? Because it's it's dense. Um, oh, I was going to say something really bad taste. Just get yourselves ready, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to say this as politically neutral as I can, because any time we mention this, well, not we, but any time anyone mentions the policies of this fucking man, it's going to start a shit show of any kind. So this next story is via TechRaptor. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft join forces against U.S. terrorists over China. Directly from the article itself. The three console makers have published a, memor a memorandum of understanding with all three companies specifically detailing the harm that Trump's administration currents U.S. tariff policies against China which would see a 25% tariff import against Chinese-made products, can harm not only their businesses, but the game industry as a whole. So if you don't know, uh, President Trump has been very aggressively slapping tariffs on multiple products in and out of America, or it, coming into America, rather, from various countries that he has political beef with. China, Mexico, for example, are two of them I can think off the top of my head. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a tariff is essentially a tax on a good coming in from these countries. So let's say we were pissed off at Canada because they won't sell us maple syrup at, at a That's reduced cost. That's what I was going to say. I was like, "That's the only thing I can think of that would make us mad at Canada." <laughs> uh, so so let's let's say we're pissed off at Justin Trudeau for some reason. So we're going to go. We're going to punish Canada by slapping a tariff on them. Or conversely, we want to encourage people to buy U.S. maple syrup. So we're going to tax Canadian maple syrup hoping to get people to buy U.S. maple syrup. Uh, tariffs can be used in a very, variety of ways, and they're one of many tools at disposal to kind of muscle your way around economically across the globe. When you have a massive amount of economic power like the U.S. does, it's one of the most surefire ways to go, no, 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 you're doing what we say, and we're not going to invade you, but we are going to make it really fucking hard for you to do business unless you capitulate. And there is a trade war going on right now in all but name between the U.S. and China because China has a history of manipulating currency and stealing IP and essentially doing a bunch of things that harm U.S. interests. So Trump has been slapping tariffs on them to kind of go, if you're going to do this, this is going to be the result. And it's it's causing problems uh, to a degree by, by design, by the way. It is meant to make things harder for China than it is for us, with some hardship on us. The whole goal is to go, we can outlast you, capitulate. And that that's the, the idea. Going on from the article itself. The part all three companies object to is HTSUS subheading 9504.50.00, which covers Classic. the... <laughs> that's my favorite part of any document, let me tell you what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which covers video game consoles as being under the umbrella of terrorists. 
Because parts of a gaming console are from Chinese-made products or assembled in China, game consoles and PCs would be adversely affected by the tariffs. It is estimated, according to the letter, that 96% of all game consoles were constructed in China in 2018, while some, like Nintendo, have reportedly begun to limit the production of consoles as China's precaution. Uh, as an aside here, that means the threat of tariffs is kind of working for what Trump is trying to do, I, I would add. The full economic impact of disrupting the supply chain established by these companies would be heavily detrimental in the long run. So the, the, the Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are saying, hey, your tariffs are going to fuck with our console supply. Because 96% of all the consoles we sell are made in fucking China. Yep. Because it's cheaper to make there because they have really lax labor laws. Let's be honest here. Yeah, 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 for sure. Also get wrecked uh, iPhones. Yeah. Uh, Samsung, though. I think Samsung was all made in Korea. Could be wrong on that. I know Samsung is a Korean company, though. From the memorandum. Video games are a core part of the American entertainment culture. Two out of three house... Uh, by the way, this is Microsoft, Sony, and uh, Nintendo's general console councils. Essentially, their lawyer team made this note. Yeah. Let me start from the yeah, top. Yeah. Video games are a core part of the fabric of American entertainment culture. Two out of three households have at least one video game player, and 6% of Americans play video games daily. A price increase of 25% will likely put new video game consoles out of reach for many American families who we expect to be in the market for consoles this holiday season. For those purchases that do go for despite tariffs, consumers would pay $840 million more than they would otherwise would have, according to a recent study prepared for the Consumer Technology Association by the Independent Economic Group Trade Partnership. Let me be perfectly clear here. This specific line is total bullshit. Companies rarely raise the consumer end price. This is like when people say, oh, if you raise the minimum wage, the cost of fries at McDonald's goes up. This is historically proven to be bullshit. That's not true. Companies don't raise prices on products like this. Usually it does happen. I don't want to say it doesn't happen, but usually it doesn't. What does happen is that people get fucking fired from these companies. You suddenly have like a department of 10 people cut down to eight and the other eight have to pick up the jobs of the two they let go. So this, this statement is trying to play to the fears of the American public going, oh, I have to pay more for my video games. Uh, you're probably not. You're probably not going to pay more for your video games. What's probably going to happen is that these three companies are going to lay people off. But if you say we're going to have layoffs, people in America to talk about how to talk about the morality of things, right? To talk about how we will always go for the cheaper product over the morality. People in America go, eh, it doesn't affect me. Who fucking cares? <laughs> Love it or hate it, right or wrong, that is going to be the response, which is why they don't say that, and they say it's going to make you cost more, or it's going to make shit cost more that you have to pay for. But that's historically just not what happens. It does happen sometimes, and this might be one of those cases. But traditionally, well, that doesn't matter. Especially if it happens that. to all of the game consoles. If all of the game consoles get hit the same amount, then they could all go up the same amount. It's not uh, you start talking about like price fixing issues at that point. It looks really bad legally. Like I said, the most likely That's response true. would be just those the big three firing people. That would be likely the most the most likely response. Or here's a thought: not do Brett, not do business with an oppressive fuck all state, and actually bring your business back to either America or Japan or whatever it goes. But hey, I'm just spitballing at that point. The letter also cites the U.S. as a world leader in video game production, with over 65,000 workers employed across 2,700 developers and publishers across the country. That letter warns that shrinking console sales due to higher costs will not only lead to a reduced sales of games, but have a, quote, deleterious effect on small and medium-sized businesses that make these games and on the workers who employ, end quote. This is also bullshit. Small, medium businesses don't make the consoles, meaning it won't affect them at all. At worst, it means that the big three will be cutting back on funding for those games. But how often does one of these big three games actually fund an independent studio to make a game for their console? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes, Xbox but not often. Anything. Not often. Anything. In fact, they're pulling back. We just read a story that said Sony is pulling back from any development. That's true. So this is also bullshit because they're pulling. The, they're, they're spinning it saying, won't someone think of the small indie devs? No, fuck off. This is a bullshit line. Additionally, I'll if it's think smaller, of the small indie devs. Additionally, if it's a smaller studio... They usually have the ladder to put their games on whatever they want, which means they're going to be on Steam, they're going to be on digital marketplaces, they're going to be everywhere, regardless of console. So the console market completely crash, these indie devs will be fine, because they'll be on Steam. They'll just bypass them. So this is another bullshit statement. Now, I want to point these out, not because I do or don't support tariffs on China. 
That's a political discussion we can have some other time with people who are far smarter than I am. The only thing I want to point out is that the, one of the few times you see the three big names in gaming, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, get together to form a joint statement, a lot of it's just bullshit and meant to make you scared. But it really isn't. Your console prices are likely not to go up. Indie developers are likely not going to get fucked by this because of the reasons I was mentioning. It's fear-mongering. It's what lawyers do. Legal battles you, uh, like of this magnitude aren't fought in the courtrooms. Because Trump has every right to do this. He has the political authority to do this. This is them trying to fight in the court of, of, of public opinion. Which is why they're using the scare words. Your consoles are going to cost more. Indie game devs are going to go out of business. Uh, you're, neither one of those two are going to get affected by this. At bet, console prices might go up, but the indie game devs are going to be fine. And it's infuriating to see one of the few times they get together to make a statement is this kind of statement that some fucking no-name can just, like myself, can tear apart. Come on. Right? I mean... What, what do you think? Let me ask what you think and what you guys at home think. What, what, I, I, could, I could be completely wrong on this. Console, the next console price could jump $500 because of this is happening, but it doesn't feel like it's going to. Do you have any I feedback at all on this? You got nothing. Nope. Uh, I, just, <laughs> right. I, I just specifically don't want to talk about this. You just specifically don't want to talk about this. Okay, let's yeah. see. Uh, Captain Ice Cold says, couldn't they move their production elsewhere? Well, where that's, that's just it. China's one of the cheapest places to have production lines because it's amazing how low your employee overhead cost is when you pay your employees a little like $5 a month. Oh, yeah, and you have nets <laughs> on the outside of the building, so when they try and jump off the roof, they live yeah. and they can go back to work. Uh, it is highly expensive to do that much know, infrastructure. There are nets the around Foxconn where all the iPhones are built. Right, and Coke for is right. You have to train a whole new workforce. It's a very, very high initial front cost. Now, Captain Ice Cold says it will be a blip on the bottom line, but companies these days, especially in gaming, don't seem to be focused on long-term growth. It's all about the immediate impact right now, and I think that's going to bite them in the ass eventually. And we're starting to see that happen. What, hasn't there been several pieces of hardware that were sold at a loss, specifically so they could focus on long-term? One of the things that they mentioned is that because profit margins are so thin on consoles, that this eliminates that, and that's one of the reasons why consoles will necessarily have to raise. But, because that has been a thing. There's been yeah. several consoles over the years that were actually released at a detriment to the company so that they could make it up. Mm -hmm. And if that thing costs even more, then they probably won't be able to take that big of a hit because, sure, you can take a little bit of a hit, but you can't take a big one, especially not when you move that much volume. Which is why I, which is why I go back to what I said earlier. When this stuff happens, when be it tariffs or minimum wage increases... What happens historically isn't the user end price goes up. That rarely happens. It does happen. The company just fires people, but that's still a shitty thing. The company thing. just fires people. And that is a shitty thing. I'm not saying it's not a shitty thing. Don't don't mistake what I'm saying here. That's why I'm saying I'm trying to read this as neutrally as possible. That's just what will happen. It's, it's less likely that prices will go up, more likely that the company will fire people. That just looks a lot worse on the end of Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. To say, hey, if he does this, we're going to have to fire a bunch of people. You have half the people going, well, do I still get my console for cheap? Because I don't fucking care. And you have the other people going, how dare you fire someone? Blah, 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 blah. So that, that's like a no-win thing to say for them. So they have to use this line of attack, this defense, despite it not likely being what the result is going to be. But once again, the fuck do I know? I'm just some guy at the microphone who talks to... Uh, to, to camera every once a week or so but that's just my opinion on it i could be wrong david yes why don't you round out with this last thing it's a lot happier and actually brings a smile to my face oh okay so there's this game because <laughs> i know i know you're so Sega. riveted by economic and political talk on this show <laughs> here's the best part so there's this thing right that's coming out being published by sega uh, it's a new title from the Ace team who made Rock of Ages and Xenoclash, and it's coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Steam in July. And it's called Soul Seraf. And from what Steven tells me, it looks exactly like ActRaiser. And I recently Googled ActRaiser to figure out what the fuck he was talking about. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so upset you didn't know what Razor is. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited for this thing I've never played. That's that. That's infuriating. Looks, looks good. Uh, if you haven't seen the trailer for this thing, I, I let me see if I can actually uh, find it. Put put a link for it up in here. Give me give me one second. Let me. Uh... David, fill time. Fill time. Okay, so Act Razor is a video game. If you're not aware, that came out for the Super Nintendo on December sixteenth, nineteen ninety. And. Um... God damn it, well, I expected I did more have, to say. <laughs> well, I did have a Super Nintendo, and I did play a lot of Super Nintendo games. I didn't play all of them, because when I had a Super Nintendo, I was very small. <laughs> and I had access to the games that were purchased for me. None of which were Act Razor. From what I understand, it looks like a side-scrolling action game where you smash things. <laughs> uh... What do I know? I'm just a guy with a microphone. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Who exists to make his cohort angry? I ain't done yet. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Did my God. This, this resolution is so bad. I am so sorry. How many? Okay. Quick question, though. Honestly, how many people in chat it, it, on, on, on Twitch or on YouTube were born after ActRaiser? <laughs> That's a good question. Anyways. This shit came out in December 1990. I'm just asking because maybe this isn't as relevant as you think it is, Stephen. So I saying. tried. I no. I, I totally get that. This is totally a. This is like when Disaster Four R- Report Four was announced. I was like, <laughs> holy shit! I'm like one of ten people that love this. I'm gonna sing it at high praises everywhere. Uh, we're getting ages of people in chat now. We have 96. We have 97. <laughs> God damn, people are young. <laughs> Hey, I, look at that. It's I, almost like maybe, <laughs> just maybe, your game is a little older <laughs> than people are ready to talk about. And I have a good reason for not ever having played it. <laughs> so I, I legit thought you would have known what this was. Because cause you do some of the retro stuff every now and then. So you're right. You're right. Fair enough. For those of you who don't know what Actraiser is, it was an amazing <laughs> Super Nintendo game that was a hybrid city management action platformer and that's all you kind of need to know and this game is coming out and i'm super fucking excited for it because actor was amazing Wait, is it a, is it a 2d side scrolling dark cloud yeah because i'm into that why don't you just say that <laughs> because i thought saying actor razor would be good enough to fire the old almonds off in your brain no, 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 no. I don't have almonds. I have pistachios. Yeah, so <laughs> what happens is you come down as an angel. You play a side-scrolling platformer where you kind of beat the shit out of things. And it goes to, like, the city management part where you build the city. And you, like, since you're a god and you have your worshippers are like, we need rain. So you cause rain to fall down. And it makes the crops grow, which makes the city grow bigger. And then they'll get invaded by something. And then you go back to the 2D platformer to uh, fight the invasion. And then it, it alternates between these two... These two styles of gameplay. And I'm shocked that no other game has actually tried to pull this off yet. But coming out next week, Soul Seraph. And I am I am super excited to do it. I guarantee goddamn to you there are at least some people excited for it. Captain Ice Cold in chat says he's 100 percent getting it. I know I'm getting it and I'm gonna be streaming it next week. I'm super fucking hyped. I want more people to share in this hype with me. Let me know if you're just as excited as I am for Soul Seraph. But David. That game yeah. doesn't come out for a long ass time. It doesn't launch until next week. Oh wow, July tenth. That's millions of years from now. I need some shit to do between now and then. I know I got Fourth of July coming up, and who wants to see that? It's not like it's my favorite holiday or anything like that, and I go all out for it every year. But that's aside the point. I need things to play between now and then. So oh, what dang. can I play between now and then? Because my hunger is insatiable, and I consume games like a crack addict. Okay, well, how about I list a bunch of things that you probably aren't going to play between now and then, because that's what's coming out this week. <laughs> yeah, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> so we have, uh, of course, the usual shit ton of tiny indie slash mobile port games going to Switch that happen every single week that I don't like to talk about, so you can look them up yourself. Uh, also, Final Fantasy fourteen is getting an expansion called Shadowbringers for PS4 and PC. It's got... I don't know what most MMO expansions has. It has new jobs, a new race, a level cap increase, uh, new ex- new areas, new primals, whatever that is, new beast tribes, new dungeons, new eight player raids. Uh, is is Final solo, Fantasy fourteen free to play or is it a subscription? Fee? New game plus. It's a it's a subscription game. That's I keep wanting to try it because that's one of those Final Fantasy fourteen specifically is one of those uh, 
comeback stories you love to hear about games because when it first launched it was garbage but they kind of turned themselves around they rebranded themselves as a realm reborn and apparently it's really fucking good now sure coco t good night thank you for showing up i never played final fantasy games to play with friends so i i stopped playing final fantasy as soon Fair as enough. they made it so that you wanted to play with friends Fair <laughs> enough uh, also coming out this week, Stranger Things 3, the game for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. This is another video game adaptation, side story, spinoff, whatever you want to call it. I believe uh, it's bridging the gap between seasons two and three. Yep, it's set in the Stranger Things universe. This is coming out right before uh, Stranger Things 3, season three drops, I think on Thursday this week, which I'm flipping hype for because I love that show. Um, it's the official companion game. You play through familiar events from the series, and there's also never before seen stuff, character interactions, secrets, all kinds of stuff. It's like a 2D isometric action adventure retro style game that is there to feed your nostalgia if you just can't wait for more Stranger Things. Did I remember they were going to? This is before Telltale blew up, but they were going to make a Telltale Stranger Things game. Did. Did that just get completely canned when Telltale went boom, or did something else pick that up? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's gone. I'd imagine so. I'm I'm almost positive it's gone. I, but, ju I just uh, remember hearing about it. Yeah. Um, there's also Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle, which isn't necessarily a game. It's just DLC to the Attack on Titan uh, Musou game. Musou games are games that play a lot like Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors is a third-person hack-and-slash game where you fight hundreds of thousands of people to death. Uh, there's a million games based on that formula in various franchises, so you can pick your favorite. This is more for Attack on Titan, which is about people with backpacks that kill giant people that are naked. I have this on my wish list on Steam, but it never drops below 50 bucks. If I can get it for less than 20 one day, I will play it, because I love, I love a good Musu game every now and then. And every I even like their spinoffs. Uh, I remember when... Dynasty Warriors Gundam or Gundam Warriors, whatever it comes out. Those were a blast. So I like their spinoff stuff too. But I, I have see, I, like I picked up Hyrule Warriors, so I'm good until like DW thirteen, I think. That I think might be the next one I pick up is Hyrule Warriors. I think the second one just came out. But I'm told that I'm that just there's something I'm hesitant to use the word relaxing about it, but there's something hypnotic about a Musu game. It's mindless. Yeah. It's like Earth Defense Force. Smash, smash X, destroy leagues it, it of people. Tickles the same, same sense of satisfaction. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, and finally, last but not least, we got Sea of Solitude for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. This does this look cool. is another of the EA indie games, and it's actually the next game being developed by Joe Made Games and published by Electronic Arts. What was And You said the first game by Joe Made? Uh, no, I think it's their second one. You I know think what the, they, the other one was? I think they were responsible for one of the other EA indie games. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe I am incorrect on that one. I thought I thought for sure they were one of the ones that made. Uh, Joe May. I don't remember. I don't know. Um, the quick the quick search at the bastion of intellectual honesty Wikipedia says that. Uh, doesn't give any listening on it, so I couldn't tell you. And as we all know, Wikipedia is 100% incorruptible and accurate on everything they say. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Anyway, so maybe they haven't made an EAND, but now they are. And it's a game where you control a young woman named Kay. She explores an abandoned, submerged city with spooky creatures to find out why the character has actually turned, the player character has turned into a monster. Yeah, she's like so. cursed or something like that and has like a water world vibe where just massive cities are half flooded. Yeah, and um, so the whole city is kind of based on Berlin, but it's like an emotional journey that's kind of one of those games that's really deep and it's exploring human psyche and relationships, and it's kind of built to be one of those thought-provoking style games. The creative director, Cornelia Gepper, actually described it as being a exploration into her own fears and emotions following a really dramatic breakup she had in 2013, mm -hmm. which is when the project kind of started. If you like games like that, by the way, that, that 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 have like a really deep meaning and can actually move you emotionally and stuff like that, I recommend you play Gris. I think it's called Gris. It's spelled G R I S. Yeah. I want to say it's like Portuguese for for gray or Spanish for gray or something. That was oh man, that game was beautiful. I I if you like if you do the whole games or art kind of thing, play Gris or Gris or however it is. And this and this sounds like another game that would be right up your alley if you're yeah. into that kind of thing. 
depends. Sometimes I am, sometimes I ain't. And but I am looking forward to playing this one. There you go. David. Uh, and I think think that's about it, man. I don't know anything else that's coming out this week, at least that I wrote down. <laughs> well, if that does it for new releases, that means that also does it for the show as well. And thank you all for showing up to Game Points episode 181. I want to thank everyone who joins us live here at Twitch TV slash Game Points every Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and joins in the conversation. That includes Coco for Tacos, Vince Nitro, Captain Ice Cold, uh, I know I'm missing other people, Salty Frank, and to anyone else happens to be lurking about, your presence is always truly appreciated. If you can't catch us live, though, and you can only watch the old shows over at youtube.com slash GamePointsPC as I start forgetting all the links to give out. Regardless of if you're watching, I want you to be part of the show by posting comments, interacting, liking, subscribing, throwing bits at. If you're sitting on Amazon and Twitch Prime subscription and haven't used it yet, please feel free to use that here. But if you don't use it here, give it to someone somewhere. You can follow the show on Twitter at GamePointsPC. You can follow myself, Stan Brown, at GapitalistPig21. And you can follow David at, there at Palshife underscore Satori. I am using, losing the faculty to talk because my voice is quickly drying out, which means I am Discord. simply going to go ahead and wrap it up. Catch us on Discord. Links provided down below. Good night to everyone. I'll be back with regular streaming of games tomorrow. But until then, peace out.